Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. We understand that everybody has a very busy schedule, especially with the upcoming elections. So we're just very grateful and appreciative for uh, you taking some time out of your day to join us. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, my name is Jordan Taylor. I'm an account manager here at Aristotle on the national data team. I will be joined later on with, by my coworker, Blake Waycaster, who will take you through the VLO webinar portion of today. So I just want to briefly highlight what we previously discussed on the last VLO webinar. Uh, we discussed models, deduping, targeting, and email marketing. So for today's webinar, we're going to discuss tools that will help prepare and assist your team for the upcoming election. Blake will go into further detail using use case scenarios to show you why these tools are important and how you can use them with you and your team. In the end, of what we want to get out of this webinar is we want to maximize your team and allow you and your team to focus on what really matters to you for the upcoming election. As most of you are aware, uh, VLO, VoterListOnline.com, is easily accessible uh, and available to you 24-7, 365 days a year. You can instantaneously uh, download data and do counts, and it's just very accessible. So, um, and we know that you work around the clock 24-7, uh, so we have a support team, a VLO support team, that is available 24-7, 365 days a year. You can email them at all times at VLO support at Aristotle.com. So throughout this presentation, if you do have any questions, um, at the end, we will have a portion of it where you can go on the right-hand side of the screen, it says chat. You can go under there and click on that and ask us any questions that arise. We're here to help, so feel free to do that at the end. So without further ado, I will let Blake take it from here and go through the webinar with you guys. All right, great. Thank you, Jordan. Uh, thank you again to everybody who is taking some time out of your schedules today to learn a little bit more about VLO with us. As Dorn mentioned, we're going to be focusing mostly on the voter file and features that will help you and the campaigns you're working on as we move towards Election Day on November 6th. Uh, as many of you know, we also maintain a consumer file and a state contributor file. Uh, we won't be going into much detail on those today. But if you want to learn more about those, uh, just let us know after the webinar and we'll schedule some time to talk about those more in depth. So with that, we'll uh, go ahead and jump in to uh, the webinar portion. Um, and as Jordan mentioned, we mainly want to go over some features um, that we think will be beneficial to you while you're working on campaigns in the last month of elections. Uh, some of these are new features. Some of them are um, frequently asked questions that we get from a lot of people around election time, and then we'll also go over some uh, maybe lesser known features that we've had for a while, but maybe you weren't aware of. Uh, the first thing I wanted to show everyone is here under vote history, and that's gonna be our voting method preference. So this is a uh, likely voting method based on the previous vote, vote history that shows you if voters likely to vote early, if they're likely to vote absentee or if they're a person who is likely to go on election day and vote at the polls. Um, it's very easy to add that to your query here. We'll just come here in vote history. Uh, let's say we wanted to uh, add those who are likely to vote absentee. So maybe your, um, maybe your campaign is looking to do a persuasion mail piece uh, that has an attached absentee ballot. I'm sure if anyone's worked in direct mail, you've seen those and you've got a nice colorful persuasion piece that also has the absentee ballot attached with the thinking being that you're gonna send that out, your absentee voters are gonna look at your mail piece, they're gonna think, oh, this candidate looks great, and they're gonna turn around, fill out that absentee ballot, and, uh, and vote for your candidate and mail it back. So instead of mailing to the whole universe and just kind of going scattershot, as you, everyone knows those big mail pieces are, are very expensive, they can pile up, Instead of mailing those out to everyone and just mailing the people who are likely to vote absentee, you could come here and select that voting method preference flag and then add it to the query there. So very simple there, that's all you need to do. 
uh, to add people who are likely to vote absentee, and then of course you can also uh, add people who vote early or people who are likely to vote at the polls there. And that kind of takes us into the next portion we wanted to talk about, which is uh, ongoing early and absentee voting. So in many states, we can collect absentee ballots and early voting ballots in real time and then convert those to VLO. So we're working in Florida here. Um, if Florida starts early voting on a Monday and they make the uh, they make the data readily available the next day, we can generally turn it around within 24 hours and add that back to our voter file. Um, you would come here to vote history. It'll be under the 18 general. Obviously, we don't have that yet uh, because absentee voting hasn't started there. Early voting hasn't started in Florida yet. But once it does, uh, we can get it convert it within 24 hours, and then you would see it here under the 18 general. Uh, you would see something like an absentee or an early or a not voted. Uh, so if you were a campaign and working uh, for one of the major parties, maybe you wanted to do a mail piece to everyone who uh, is a registered Democrat or Republican who has not voted yet and remind them of their polling place or their precinct uh, where they would go to cast their vote. So instead of, again, sending that piece to the entire universe that you're working in, uh, narrowing it down to people who have not voted yet. You could come and select that once we've got that early voting up here under general, add that to your query, and that's gonna give you anyone who has not yet voted. Uh, same, same thing goes for if you wanna target people who have maybe voted absentee or early, uh, you can do that under the general vote history as well. So again, we don't have it there yet as early voting uh, hasn't started yet. Once it does though, we can usually acquire those as long as, the state, uh, as long as the state will provide them. And if you are working in a certain jurisdiction or you're working in a state, uh, once early voting has started and you don't see it here, uh, feel free to reach out to us and let us know as we can usually collect on a case-by-case -case basis. So if you don't see them um, and you wanna find out more about early and absentee ongoing uh, voting, just let us know and we're happy to uh, reach out and, and uh, try to acquire that data from the states. <clears throat> All right, uh, we're gonna move on now to a, a new feature we have uh, under party. And this is party switchers or people who have uh, changed parties in the past. So you'll see here, we've got the party codes, just just as they always are, all the parties in the state are there. And then below, we've now got a previous party. So I'm sure a lot of people have you know, heard from the 2016 election that there were a lot of people who changed parties after that election, uh, whether that was labor-minded Democrats who uh, liked Trump's pro-labor message and switched over to vote Republican, or if it was longtime moderate Republicans who didn't like Trump and moved over to the Democratic Party. So this is a great feature to find those true swing voters, maybe people who have a party affiliation, but still share some of the same ideologies of their previous party. Uh, if you wanted to, for instance, find people who are registered Republicans now, but who may have been Democrats in the past, you would come here and select their current party and then the previous party, and then add that to the query. And while we're on the subject of swing voters, we wanted to go back and talk about our models just a little bit. Uh, I know we talked about these in depth on our last webinar, but these are great tools to find swing voters. So we wanted to go back over them a little bit. Uh, we just recently won the Read Award for Best Machine Learning Models last year. So this is a feature we're really excited about and we think can really help you out uh, as, you, as you move towards uh, election day. For example, if, someone, if you're in a state where someone is registered as an independent, but you maybe want to find out, uh, maybe you may want to target uh, Republican-leaning independents, you could come here to the political affiliation probability model. Let's just add here a lower bound and an upper bound like we discussed on the last webinar. Let's say we wanted to use a uh, 40, 70% model here. That, that's going to be Republicans, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, Republican-leaning independents. It's not, you know, it's not too high, not too low. It's not going to be uh, your, your uh, you know, very reliable 
uh, Republican voter, but it's going to be an independent somewhere in the middle. You could use that probability, the 40 to 70 there, and add that to the query. So again, that's a great way, that po political affiliation probability model is a great way to find, uh, to find true swing voters, to find people who may be registered in one party, but their political leanings may be more towards the center or even more towards the other party. We've also got, uh, for fundraising purposes, we've got federal and state donor models, as well as a charitable donor model. So uh, anything from fundraising for your national or Senate races all the way down to uh, your smaller state house or local races, we can show you the likelihood that people are to donate and how much they're likely to donate uh, to those races. We've also got a great turnout probability model here. And not only does our turnout model show how likely a person is to vote, but we have it broken down by election type. So this is a great tool to target uh, drop-off voters, uh, people who may vote in a presidential year but not in a midterm year, and uh, maybe target them with a get-out-the-vote message, whether that's a phone bank or a canvasser um, or, a, or a mail piece. So to find, uh, to find those drop-off voters, you could come here to the presidential general, and I would um, probably start that with a 50% on the lower bound, meaning they've got a 50% chance or higher to vote in those uh, presidential year generals. But maybe over here uh, on the midterm general, a 50% on the upper bound, which is going to help you target those, uh, those critical drop-off voters, those people who uh, can be motivated to vote, have voted in the past, but maybe aren't as engaged around the midterms. Um, Obviously, we're coming up on a midterm election, so targeting those people, especially if you're in a competitive race, is going to be really important, and uh, being able to find those people is going to be really beneficial to you. All right, so we'll move on to uh, the next portion. We're going to talk about a new phone feature we've just added. You come here to phone. Down here at mobile cord cutter, this is a, a cord cutter select that we've just added to our file. So this feature is going to allow you to target voters uh, who no longer maintain a landline or a cable TV. Uh, the, the universe will skew younger as most millennials, as we all know, only maintain a cell phone. Uh, and, and as millennials have matured a little, they've kind of gone from the periphery of elections to really being uh, a central focus from a lot of campaigns. I know it's a big deal now for campaigns to try to get the message out to millennial voters as they are becoming more engaged in the democratic process and uh, and participating in elections more. So uh, again, this is a this is a universe that is likely of likely people who do not have cable, uh, therefore they won't see your TV ads. Um, so maybe you want to use this select to target people who you might want to target with uh, text messages or emails or digital ads. Um, you know, getting more creative and targeting them in uh, new ways as opposed to traditional TV or robocalls. And again, that's here under cord cutter, under the phone criteria. Uh, simply just click the tag there, yes, and we'll add that to the query. Uh, another new feature we wanted to go over is under jurisdiction, and that's our new mover feature. So this is very new. This is something we've just added to our file. Uh, this is going to allow you to target those who have recently moved into a new district. You have a few options here. You can target by their move date, um, how long they've moved, they moved from their previous district to their new one, as well as uh, the districts they've moved into, whether that's a congressional district, a state senate district, or a, or a state house district. We've also got an out-of-state flag here. Um, we'll just go ahead and click that and add that to the query. And this new movers, I think, is a, uh, is a great new feature. Um, we base this on utility and phone records. It's not just based on a change of address check. We do those monthly as well, but this is based on utility records. We match it to our voter file and our consumer base. We really think this is a unique data set that most of our competitors can't offer right now. We update it monthly so you know it's uh, recent and you've got the most recent data there. Um, we see this as a tool that campaigns and already elected officials could use. Um, maybe a campaign would want to uh, target people who had moved into their district and 
uh, allow the candidates to, you know, call those people and um, start a dialogue with people who may be new to the district. It could also be great for people on the Hill who maybe want to target um, people who have moved from out of state or people who just moved into their district. Uh, maybe they want to target those people and send them a welcome or a greeting message. So uh, we see a lot of utility on our new mover file. Um, we think this is a great tool for both campaigns and already elected officials. From there, we wanted to uh, go over a few frequently asked questions we get. Um, we get a lot of questions about phones around election time. So we wanted to clear up a couple of those. Um, first things first, when you log in here, we have a lot of people ask us this question. You'll log in, you'll see the count run, it'll automatically update, and then you'll see the unique landlines here. We have a lot of people who just say, oh, okay, I want that landline count. I want all, you know, almost 70,000 of those landlines. <coughs> and then um, we'll just go ahead and check out there. But you actually want to add some phone criteria to those if you want to target more based on a uh, based on the, the phone quality. So we, we have these use case scenarios up here. Uh, we encourage everyone to uh, familiarize yourself with those and to use those. We find that almost all of our clients who work with phones uh, use these use case scenarios and are very satisfied with the results on those. So you can come down here and select any landline or mobile. You could also come up here and we've got our high connect landlines. Now that's going to mean we've validated the number by um, matching it across several sources. A, a non-high connect number may only be matched on one source. So if you want the best numbers, um, you're not worried about quantity, you'll want to go with a high connect option. That's just going to give you the numbers that give you the best chance to get your voters on the phone. We've also got the DNC flag down here. Uh, as I'm sure most of you know, if your political phone work is excluded from the do not call uh, regulations, but we do find that uh, people who are on the do not call list, even if they have a high connect number, are less likely to answer the phone. So we wanted to uh, make you aware of uh, that do not call feature there so that you can go and exclude those people if, uh, if you want to narrow it down even further. We're going to move on now to uh, a couple questions we get on mailing. And honestly, probably the question we get the most uh, regarding mailing is the difference between a unique household and a unique address. So one address can contain multiple households. Um, an example I like to use is several roommates living together. Um, they're not related. They're all their own separate household, but they've all got the same address. So let's say you were mailing out a, a persuasion piece. Um, you know, it's a big, nice piece like we talked about earlier, and you think, you know, this thing's probably going to end up on the fridge or on the coffee table. Um, everybody's going to see this in the house, so we're only going to send one. In that case, you would use unique addresses. Uh, any household or any address with, you know, four or five different households only get one piece there. Um, now let's say you wanted to do a, a fundraising ask or a absentee ballot mailing like we talked about earlier. Uh, you may want to use the household feature or even the individual feature for your mailing as uh, you're going to want to send out a piece or a fundraising request to uh, every person or uh, one per household. So, um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's kind of the most frequently asked question we get on, uh, on mailings and, and hope that's, that's cleared, cleared it up for everyone. And the last thing we wanted to talk about uh, on the webinar portion um, are, is the state summary here. Uh, this is where you can go to find any, answer any questions about data recency, about uh, how, when we've acquired the data, when we've updated it. We're working in Florida here, you can see we just acquired uh, a new voter file from Florida just a couple of weeks ago. Uh, the data should be extremely fresh there. We just converted it and got it online. You'll also see we've got our change of address, do not call update, and phone refreshes here. Anytime you have a question about when the data was acquired, you can always come here to state summary. We've got those on every single state and uh, under the dates here. And if you click over to summary here, 
you'll see a, a few uh, helpful links here in case you want to look at uh, boat history field mapping, county level turnout. Uh, if you've got a question about uh, fields in your file, you can come down to data dictionary and that'll explain what all of our fields mean. Um, you can also come down here to voter list data details and you'll see down here at the bottom is the legal use. Obviously, uh, Florida here is unrestricted. Um, anytime you have a question about the legality of, uh, of the state you're working in, uh, you can always go to state summary and click over to summary and come down here and check. So again, a lot of good stuff there under state summary. Um, and usually that can help answer a lot of questions we get regarding you know, legal use, uh, data currency, and questions about what our fields need. So that's going to conclude uh, the, the voter list online portion of the webinar. I had a couple things we wanted to mention. Uh, we know a lot of you do uh, data matching, especially as you're coming up on the end of campaigns. You know, you may have uh, files of supporters or uh, raw data that you need, you need data appended to, uh, whether you need us to append emails and phone numbers, or uh, we can append our entire voter file layout for you. Again, we have a full service data shop. We can accommodate any of your matching needs. And uh, we actually have a, an exciting special that we're going to run through the election. If you purchase a match job before November 6th, uh, we will append the vote history results for no additional cost once we've received those from the state. So if you have a list of supporters and you want us to append emails or phone numbers uh, before the election, We'll do that, and then once we receive the data back after the election, we can append all those uh, supporters' vote history, so you can see exactly who voted, who did not out of your supporter list. Uh, another thing we wanted to mention was our, were our digital capabilities. Uh, we have our voter file and many selects up on all the digital DSPs and exchanges if you want to target your audience on the web. We've partnered with ALC Digital to provide you the best in political data when targeting voters. Uh, whether you need just the data or a full service assistance with, uh, with the uh, deployment portion online, uh, we can assist with that. And of course, we wanted to briefly mention our unparalleled customer support. As Jordan mentioned, we have support available 24-7, 365, nights, weekends, and holidays. And in conjunction with your sales rep, you also have access to a dedicated account manager here, whether that'll be myself, uh, Jordan, or Kristen Wormley Lee, uh, we'll take great care of you. Uh, like I said, we work nights and weekends all the way through the election. We're here for you. We know that politics is not a nine to five thing. So uh, anytime you have questions, feel free to, to let us know and we're always happy to, uh, to get you fixed up and help you out there. Uh, with that said, that's gonna conclude our portion. Um, we are going to now open it up for questions. Uh, you can, Go over here on the side panel and raise your hand uh, in the webinar, and we can mute you to ask, or we can unmute you, I'm sorry, to ask questions, or you can type those in. So we'll open it up for questions if anybody has any now. Yeah, um, I wanted to know, where do you go to find uh, inquiries that you're saying? Uh, sorry, could you, sorry, Joe, could you repeat that real quick? Yeah, where do you go to find the inquiries that you say? A query that you say, okay. Uh, yeah, you'll come up here to Query Manager. Okay. And it should be up there. Uh, any that you say now, if you need to pop it, uh, pop it down. Oops, excuse me, pull this out here. If you need to find ones that you've created in the past that may not show up there, you can come here and and reference all of those. And then uh, you can come here 
to save any of those queries. So you would save it here once you create it, and then you would access it uh, under Query Manager over here on the left hand side. Now, can I can I send that query that I did to uh, uh, my my data entry people to check the numbers? Like, right? Can I send that query to someone? Uh, actually, uh, my boss. Um, yeah, you can. You can send the query um, to others. Now, when you you come over here, you should see uh, another username here, and then you'll just click this button uh, here to share that query with another user. Oh, so put the email address where the username is, or is it the uh, the Aristotle username? They will. Uh, they will. They will need to. Yeah, it'll be the Aristotle username. They'll need to set up their own uh, username. Uh, <laughs> but once they've done that. Yeah, you can use the, the feature here under Query Manager to just type in their Aristotle username and then click this button and send it to them. Okay. Um, does it save? Can you, can you save the name once you get it? Oh, you gotta can, they, can they save the query once they get it? No, I mean, once, I, once I used it the first time, would it populate in when I want to send something else to them? Um, you would need to. Now you would need to send it um, each time you create a new one. You can uh, set a default query if you want to save one of your um, one of your current queries as a default. You can use this button right here to set it as a default. But if you yeah, if you update a query or something and you want to send it to them, just uh, once you've updated it, you'll need to push it back um, to their username again. All right, cool. All right. Okay, great. Um, Looks like we got uh, a question about from Jeff about um, what we will. Oh, this is a chat question. Sorry, not from Jeff. Uh, we, on our on our chat, we received a question: How soon will you receive election data? Um, if referring to the 2018, the upcoming election, it'll depend upon the state. Um, really, we're when we receive the data the first time. We're kind of at the mercy of the states and when they they are uh, ready to ship it and once they've once they verified it and uh, authenticated it and are ready to send it out we're kind of at their mercy until then but um, once we've got it we can usually turn it around really quickly um, especially if we're talking about ongoing early voting or absentee voting uh, those we can turn around like i mentioned in 24 hours or less um, once we get them from the state uh, and then we should, just a couple weeks after the election, begin to start receiving uh, full-on election results from states, and then we'll begin converting those. So it does vary state by state. If you've got one in particular that you're looking at, uh, you can email me at blake.waycaster at aristotle.com, and uh, we, can, we can check the schedule um, and, and get you a kind of an estimate on when, we're gonna, when we expect to have those in. Hey, uh, Jeff, we, uh, do you still have a question? I saw your, your hand was raised. I kind of said it to you, Mike, it, it's around the concept of the do not call list. If you're on a do not call list, that, that means you, you don't call. But my misunderstanding might be that you might be on ABC's do not call list, but you're not on DEF's do not call list. So is it kind of similar to unsubscribing to emails from you know, certain lists or whatever, you, you, you would still have to continue to unsubscribe to a number of different do not call lists before you're just a, a flat out do not call number. Right. So this one, this one's going to be the FTC uh, do not call registry. Um, so yeah, anyone on that one, uh, on that registry, you, you can exclude them here with the flag. Um, now, the pol political uh, phone calls are excluded from um, those regulations. You know, obviously, we understand that a lot of people still, even if you tell them that, you know, they, they still um, don't want to be called. So, um, so yeah, you are exempt from, from those uh, regulations. Um, but again, it's just something, you know, we recommend uh, to, to people if they want to completely maximize the number of calls they're getting out and the number of answers they're getting. Uh, we recommend you do 
use that do not call flag, even though we have a lot of people who don't use it and technically you're not, um, you're not bound by law to use it. So uh, it's really more of a kind of a, kind of a personal preference thing. Um, when you're making your calls, like I said, we have a lot of clients who use it. A lot of clients who just want all the phones and they want to just dial to, uh, to as many numbers as possible. So it, it's kind of more of a, a personal preference thing. Uh, and, and to answer the original question, yeah, this one's just going to be those on the on the FTC registry. Does that does that answer the question? Yeah, that does. It just as a general consumer, you know, we, we're getting more and more calls on cell phones and these sorts of things. And so the the question I've just heard just here there everywhere is, hey, I'm you know I thought they were on the do not call list, so I just wanted to learn more about this particular usage of it. And so that helps. Thank you. Okay, great. Let's see, are there any other questions Does anyone have, uh, whether it's a chat or uh, want to raise your hand? Let's see. Oh, we actually got a question from the chat. Uh, someone asked, I really want to look at my race as an example. Can I uh, send that jurisdiction or is it not a fit? What are you, what you are about? Okay. Um, so I'm assuming, I'm, the way I'm reading that question is um, someone wants to look at their race specifically. Uh, we can do that. If you, uh, if you want to get in touch afterwards and have, have um, specific questions about your own jurisdiction, um, you know, whatever uh, whatever district you're running in, uh, you can email me, blake.waycaster at aristotle.com, and we can answer more uh, more specific questions about your race and your jurisdiction specifically. Got another question, how much error do you see in your, uh, typically in your machine learning models? Um, honestly, I'm not, I'm not hundred percent certain on that. That's something that we can, uh, we can look at afterwards. I'm going to make a note of that one. Okay. So we we know who asked that question. We're going to make a note of it and we will follow up with you, um, on an email once we've completed here. Another user asked what percent of records have a high accuracy phone number attached? I, again, that one's going to vary um, from place to place. There's some places where um, we see well north of 50% on either landmines or mobiles um, or high connect. Uh, there's some places where it's a little lower. So that one is going to be um, dependent on uh, kind of where you are. But we generally see that um, either high, you know high connect landlines or mobiles will make up. Um, Somewhere between you know 40 and 50 percent of, of the numbers in most places. Like I said, it can be a little higher, a little lower in some places, but that's a, a good general rule of thumb. Someone asked, what percentage of records have an email address attached? Um, again, that that one will vary a little bit, but. Uh, and we're adding emails all the time, and we've seen that number go up a lot in recent years to almost half the file uh, has an email on, on file. So we're really seeing that um, emails and mobiles, those, are, those numbers seem to be going up, whereas landlines are stagnant or in some places going down. So um, we're, adding, we're adding emails all the time, adding mobiles all the time, and we're seeing those, uh, those numbers go up across the board. We asked, someone asked uh, about the political affiliation probabilities. How do you determine that they might be leaning in a way contrary to the registration or primary voting history? <clears throat> uh, our models take into account uh, a, a huge swath of our, our overall data points. So, um, so those are going to take into account things like consumer pins um, and a lot more info just than the political, uh, political vote history. So um, again, that's going to vary on uh, on individuals, but 
Um, generally, we're taking into account so many more data points uh, in those machine models than we would if we were just creating like a flag or something based on uh, based on boat history. So I want to ask where they could go for more information. Uh, you can go to voterlistonline.com if you want to sign up uh, to start an account. You can get in there, run counts for free. Um, you can check out the entire system without without needing to purchase anything. And if you have uh, more specific questions, you can reach out to me again, Blake Waycaster at Aristotle.com to schedule a tutorial or a walkthrough on VoterList if you want to learn more about the system and how to use it yourself. All right, everyone, I think that's all of our questions. Uh, again, thank you all so much for joining us this afternoon. We know uh, elections are coming up fast, so we appreciate you taking out uh, some of your limited time to talk to us. Again, if you want to get in touch and learn more about VoterList, you have any other questions that we didn't address, uh, you can email me at blake.waycaster, that's W-A-Y-C-A-S-T-E-R, at Aristotle.com. Um, again, thanks so much, and uh, good luck on the upcoming elections, everyone.